Hello, my name is Jonathan Mee, and in this uh, part two of CNC routers, uh, we'll be talking about our, our, the rest of our CNC setup, as well as our control system and uh, some basic uh, functions. And this here is our current CNC operator, uh, Carson Weiner. He is the uh, most experienced on our team at operating this. Now to start off, we'll talk about our, our CNC table. So our table, we constructed ourselves, uh, which we catted up first. It's made out of two by fours, four by fours, and some plywood. Uh, we have uh, three layers here. We have our ground layer, which is behind this, and we put store some uh, stuff under there. We have our first layer here, which uh, we have the computer set up, uh, some more storage, as well as a power strip and the CNC control box. And then above that, we have storage for all of our MDF sacrifice boards and also some other sheet stuff. Uh, so next, we'll be talking about our uh, computer setup here, which is very important. So the way Velox works is uh, you can you mail you can they can. Uh, give you a computer to run the CNC off of, or you can mail them one that which they will set up. So we have right here, we have this uh, very small mini computer. Uh, this is nice since it's uh, nice and small. It's also com uh, almost completely sealed, so it's hard for dust, chips, and oil to get in. Uh, and we also have a uh, monitor up here. We have monitor arm up there, which allows the CNC operator to wash the CNC and operate, the, um, operate it. Uh, and then down here, we also have a uh, USB hub. Uh, which we plug our USBs into, and uh, this is uh, very important as well because if you wa if you watch my HSM work series video series, uh, you'll know that uh, to get the uh, the CNC code to the to the CNC, we uh, generate the code in HSM works on a CADing computer, and then we transfer that onto a USB to the CNC computer, which then runs it. Uh, we also have here a uh, wireless keyboard. This is also incredibly nice because it allows the CNC operator to move around freely while the CNC is running. Uh, and this particular wireless keyboard also has a trackpad on it uh, so that the op CNC operator doesn't need to carry on a mouse as well. And so one of the most important parts of the CNC uh, is the e-stop button. Uh, you should always know where this is. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, when the CNC is running, say something bad happens, it messes up, uh, you just hit the e-stop button. And uh, to reset it, you just uh, spin it. And this, hitting the e-stop button will uh, instantly stop all the axes, as, uh, but it will not stop the router. Now this is because the spindle we have is uh, manually, is the, uh, the speed and the on and off are manually controlled, so you have to be careful of that. Uh, so the software that we use is uh, Mach 3. Now Mach 3 is, a, uh, is the software that runs the CNC. It's one of the options that you can get from Velox. Uh, there's a couple of other options, but we decided to go with Mach 3 uh, since it allows, it's uh, very basic and uh, easy to control. Uh, so this is the uh, interface here. This is all pre-configured if, if you were to buy your CNC from Velox. So we'll start off on the, t uh, on the bottom left here. Uh, this is the reset button. Whenever you start up the CNC or after it gets e-stopped, the CNC, uh, you can see it's blinking. That means it's, uh, uh, um, it's uh, uh, essentially sort of off in a sense because the, the CNC will not run at all when this is blinking. Now, so when you start up, you're going to want to hit the reset button. So you just click that, and then there's no more text, and it's also green. And then after that, um, uh, you're gonna look up here. So these these four are your uh, is the digital readout, uh, which is the um, also the shortened DRO DRO inputs. So each of these uh, you can think of as a coordinate as a coordinate system, uh, and these are in inches, and they give uh, they allow the CNC to know exactly where it is on here. And there's four buttons next to each axis: the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, don't worry about the fourth axis since we do not have a fourth axis on here. And these four, three buttons right here, the zero button, uh, sets this, uh, this value to zero, uh, which is important for cutting out parts on the, uh, on the vices and on the, uh, and on the uh, sheet, sheet metal. Uh, so now, whenever we start up the CNC, it's very important to ref home. Now, refing home is essentially moving the CNC back to the, uh, what you would consider zero, zero, zero. Uh, in a coordinate system, and in, the CNC finds this zero 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 by moving toward that bottom back top left uh, top right corner over here, and going until it hits these limit switches. And these limit switches 
uh, allow the CNC to know exactly where to where zero 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 is, and uh, it's also very important for the uh, the y-axis here because there's actually two motors controlling that move this. Uh, this is the gantry, by the way, this section up here that move it and. Uh, zero uh, refing home ensures that the motors are in sync and will move together. Uh, so the keyboard controls for this, uh, they're very simple. Uh, the arrow keys move, uh, if you were looking at the CNC this way, the arrow keys move to, uh, up and down, move it forward and backward. Uh, the left and right arrow keys move it left and right. Holding down function and c hitting the up and down arrow keys will move the Z axis up and down. Holding down shift and uh, pressing one of the directions will jog will jog the uh, jog the axes. Jogging the axes essentially moving it at full speed. Since uh, uh, typically uh, just hitting, pressing these will be not as quick. Uh, it's actually a speed you can set in here. But um, Carson will uh, start off since this is the uh, first time we turn the CNC on today by refing home. So you want to start off by moving each axis uh, closer. Uh, close to the uh, the home over there. If it's already pressing a limit switch, uh, like the z-axis here, you're going to want to move it off the um, off the limit switch. So you can see here he presses shift. Uh, he's moving it that way, up arrow key, and this way at the same time, which is the right arrow key. So he gets very close, and then he stops. Uh, for the z-axis, he'll also move it down a bit, since it is um, already pressing the limit switch. So holding down function and the down arrow key. We'll move it down. So he's not jogging this one since he only has to move it a very short distance. Now if you want to move closer here, uh, you can actually, you can watch the, uh, uh, he'll press the ref home button and then you can watch as each of the axes hits the limit switch. So this is the Z axis first and then it moves on the Y axis. Down here. You can see that, presses the limit switch and then backs off. And they should click for the y-axis at the exact same time, and that's how you'll know they're in sync. And that's the x-axis. And now it's done. If at any point during this, the CNC uh, keeps moving past the limit switch or does not home properly, you're going to want to hit the e-stop button to prevent damage to the CNC. And uh, in case you didn't know, the ref home button is right next to here. And after it refs home, you'll see that each of these boxes around it, these have turned green. Uh, before they were red, which means they weren't uh, ref home. Uh, now, the uh, other things you want to pay attention to on the Mach 3 uh, interface is uh, feed rate. So feed rate is essentially how fast the CNC is cutting. Uh, this will typically be set in the uh, in the program that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 person who generates the G code, which uh, G code, which is the um, the code that the CNC runs off of, uh, will set the feed rate. However, if the CNC is not cutting as optimally, the CNC operator can decide to feed rate override it by pressing the up key to increase the feed rate, the minus key to decrease the feed rate, and also the reset key to reset the feed rate to what it was set to in the program. Uh, for spindle speed, spindle speed, you can ignore this for us since our router, our router, the um, uh, the speed control is right on here. Uh, there's 21,000, 19,000, 16,000, 13,000, and 10,000 RPM. And the person who will generate the G code will also uh, let you know which speed to run the spindle at. Um, uh, the tool information, we don't have you know, an automatic, automatic tool changer, so you can uh, ignore that as well. We have to manually change our tools. Uh, and then over here, we have this right here. This is the uh, also very important. This is where you run the G code. So. Uh, the buttons you want to pay attention to are load G code and close G code. So you can load G, load some G code. I believe we have some on the flash drive right here. Yes. So uh, the CNC operator, if you open this again, the CNC operator will know uh, what order to run these in because they'll all be labeled by numbers. So this is one, and then at following it is also the tool that they'll be using. So you can see the first program that the CNC operator should run to make uh, whatever part this is is a one three sixteen drill. So that that's all the information the CNC operator needs to know. And then uh, you just double click it, and it loads loads the G code here. Uh, and then to close it, you just close it, uh, and then the uh, buttons here, uh, cycle start, so when you have the uh, program ready, you just hit cycle start. Feed hold uh, holds the feed rate, essentially so the CNC will come to a stop 
uh, and then stop is a uh, hard stop. It'll, instead of feed hold, we'll like finish the current operation and then hold. Uh, stopping will just instantly stop it, just like the e stop button would. Um, now, before you run the CNC, uh, run the actual CNC, you want to zero the CNC. So for sheet metal, um, uh, you're going to want to zero the X, Y, and Z axis. So uh, you're going to say, say this is the sheet that we'll be cutting out of, and the CNC uh, and the uh, person who makes the G code has set the zero to be this corner right here. So what you do is you want to move it over. Uh, once again, using the arrow keys and holding down shift to go at a faster speed. Uh, for sheet metal, it does not, uh, your zero, uh, unlike the vices, doesn't need to be very accurate in a sense, as long as, you know, whatever you're cutting out is not going to hit uh, one of these uh, screw holes, which just screws down the material, or, um, or hit the, uh, or, you know, cut off of it. So just make sure all your material is on there. Uh, so to start off, you're at, uh, zero the Y axis. So this way, uh, if you come around over here, uh, you can see that uh, this lines up with the stock. Uh, depending on you know how the person has uh, generated the G code, uh, typically it's up to the edge of the stock. So you can see just sort of eyeball it uh, that it's there. Uh, you can get a closer look if you move the Z axis down a bit. Now you want to be careful uh, not to run the CNC, crash the CNC into anything. So you see it's a bit off, so you move it back a little. And uh, letting go of shift and moving the X axis moves it slower, as you can see. So he moves. The, uh, you're gonna want to move the uh, over a bit more uh, into about halfway through the uh, end mill or drill bit, and then you're gonna want to line up the x-axis, so which is this axis right here. So move it over a bit until it's uh, halfway, and then finally, so when you uh, and so when you get there, you're gonna go up to here and hit zero x and zero y, and then you'll see these coordinates turn to zero. And then the last axis you're going to want to zero is your Z axis. So you're going to want to move it off of your X, Y, uh, X, Y, zero, and then move it to somewhere in the sheet metal. Sheet metal is it's, uh, typically almost always uniformly flat. So just move it someplace in the sheet metal. So he'll, he'll go, go lift it up a bit and then move over. Move over to someplace flat in the sheet metal. Uh -oh, and then he'll zero the Z. So zeroing the Z is very simple. You just uh, move it down close and then move it very slowly uh, just until the end mill or drill bit touches the surface. Just like that. So you know, zoom in a little. You can see right here, it's just barely touching the surface. Uh, and then you're going to hit the zero Z. And then that's done. And then you want to move up out of the way. And then you just hit um, cycle start here, and it will run the program. Uh, um, and so that's essentially how you run sheet metal. Uh, to mount the sheet metal, we use um, screws. Since we use the MDF sacrifice board, we can screw directly into it using these screws. Uh, for, the, for the stock, we'll have holes pre-drilled in the stock that somebody will drill on, say, the drill press or the hand drill, and screw uh, right, in, right in and hold the stock down. For parts, uh, since almost all of our parts are cut out of the sheet metal, yeah, uh, the, um, you'll usually drill first, use a 316 drill, drill through the part, and the part will have holes, such as in this gusset right here. There's holes, and then the CNC operator will then uh, put, use screws to hold down, to, uh, use screws in some of the holes to hold this part down, so that when they cut the outline, it will, um, it will the part will remain fixed to the table and won't, you know, like fly out or something. Uh, and that'll be all for part two, which is, uh, as a refresher, it's operating Mach 3, how we cut sheet metal, about our computer setup, and our CNC table. Thank you for watching.